Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we discuss day-to-day -day problems people face in their lives. Let's start with the video. My, 30, boyfriend 35, has two kids with his ex, 35. They have split custody, but in practice, she doesn't follow it, and it's been getting worse over the years. Boyfriend and I have been together for over two years. During the first several months, things were great. His kids were doing well. They spent ample time with both my boyfriend, their dad, and his ex, their mom. I spent a decent amount of quality time with my boyfriend and was nice towards his kids, still am. Our intimate life was great. We went on routine date nights. Within the next several months, things slowly began going downhill. The ex became less involved in her kids' lives. For example, she would spontaneously drop them off at his house during her week, even right as he and I were about to head off to date night. Or, in the middle of intercourse, she barged in his house unlocked with the kids during her week because she didn't feel like watching them and would drop them off and drive off. Just a couple examples. The second year, this past year, has been insane, to the point where he's basically doing everything. She won't attend any school events regarding the kids, she stops showing up at their birthday parties, she sends them over with old dirty clothes, she ignores her oldest child whenever they try to contact her through kids messenger or my boyfriend's phone. During her week, she won't take the kids to the doctor if they're sick, the youngest four is still in diapers, boyfriend and I have been trying to potty train him but the mother refuses which doesn't help the minimal progress. This has taken a toll on the kids as they've been having serious behavioral issues since their mother has backed away. The youngest, for example, is always crying out for his mother these days. The oldest, 10, is showing signs of an eating disorder and thinks she's not pretty or good enough. She tries to starve herself. I try to cheer her up. She also has been complaining and crying to me about her mom ignoring her. As a result, my boyfriend has had to spend an increasingly large amount of time with them to make up for when their mom is absent. He got the oldest one into therapy four months ago, but she's had little progress. Our intimate life has gone down to almost nothing, which he is fine with for now, or so he says, but it's seriously been affecting me. We also rarely go on date nights anymore. I was recently in the hospital and he was supposed to check on me, but got sidetracked again regarding his kids about something else the ex did. I ended up crying. I had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with him yesterday on how I felt, that I was feeling intimately frustrated, undesired, and like an outsider in the relationship. I told him at this point he either needs to not be in a relationship so he can work solely on his kids and fix what his ex has caused, or he needs to set hard boundaries with the ex so me and him can have a real relationship together. He got furious and told me I shouldn't make him choose between him and the children. Am I the a-hole? Edit, thank you for your input. I'll consider both sides, whether I should end it or power through. Also, for those of you assuming all I care about is intimacy, I disagree. It's important to me in a relationship, but not the end-all be-all. My boyfriend and I went from having intercourse six times a month to twice a month. He cannot compromise more than twice a month. Also, he was not visiting me at the hospital when he told me he would check on me. I feel unwanted. I've done my best trying to be there for the kids by playing with them, taking them out for ice cream, watching cartoons with them, etc. I taught the older one how to swim, like a fun aunt role, as I don't have any legal ties. I'm very nice to them but the damage their mom has done seems to be a lot. I'm also unhappy that the ex can walk in the door at any time because she feels like it. I feel conflicted. I want what's best for the kids but I'm currently feeling like I don't matter at all in the relationship. I remember during the beginning of my relationship my boyfriend and I agreed to be there for each other including needs, emotional, physical, etc. You're the a-hole. I don't want to believe you are seriously complaining about your intimate life when his children are basically being abandoned by their mother. You're right, he doesn't need to be in a relationship with you. He obviously has bad taste in partners because you and his ex sound like truly selfish people. This is what got me too. She's complaining that she's intimately frustrated, yet these kids are being neglected and no doubt emotionally abused by their mother. You're the a-hole. You can choose between having a relationship with someone with kids or not. 
That's the only choice here. Those are his children, not puppies. They will always come before some girlfriend and every partner he takes from now on until they're 18 at the youngest will always have to expect that. If you want a childless partner, then make that a requirement and pick someone else. Same here. I've broken up with someone because they were one, allergic to cats, but assured me it wasn't that serious. But then when we became exclusive, started making passive aggressive comments about my cats. And two, didn't like my dog because he's a big dog, didn't do anything to him, just doesn't like big dogs. My dog is 14, so he doesn't even have patience for me. And I damn sure enough looked at him and was like, damn, well, I guess this won't work out. See you around. Then he had the nerve to hit me up later and was like, you're really going to break up with me over animals. That's why you're still single. I not so politely told him to go F himself. And yes, I would gladly stay single for the rest of my life rather than give up animals that have been with me and helped me with douchebags like him broke my heart. I didn't say all of that. Just said, yep, guess I will be and hung up. But the rest I thought. You're the a-hole. If you don't want this, you can leave. But asking him to make a decision is an a-hole move. Of course, these poor kids are the priority. They need their dad. If you have kids with him, you would like him to be the best father possible, isn't it? Well, that's what he's doing now. Actually, I would encourage him to ask for more custody since the mother is not reliable. He must do what's best for the kids at this moment. That is the most important thing. Grow up. How do you think he feels? He didn't choose this workload and stress fell on his shoulder. How do you think the kids feel? They miss their mom and stability. This isn't about you in any way. This is a family in turmoil. If you can't handle it, leave. A father will never choose a girlfriend over his own kids, especially when he knows 98% of the parenting falls on him and they wouldn't have anyone. If you value intercourse more than this man you love and the kids, you're nice to just walk away. While I totally understand your frustration, I do have to say you're the a-hole because when you choose to date someone with children, you have to anticipate that this is going to be messy, unpredictable, and pretty much anything can happen. Plus, you're dependent on the behavior of the other parent. I understand that the situation has changed since you and your boyfriend got together and I do wonder if his ex is using her children to sabotage her ex's relationship with you. Awful. But regardless, he does have to put his kids first here. I'm separated and have kids and also have been in a serious relationship. My rule is my kids need to come before my boyfriend's needs, but my boyfriend's needs come before my kids' wants. Unfortunately for all concerned, especially the kids, his kids' needs are clearly not being taken care of by their mother and they need to take priority here with their father. To give him an ultimatum is unfair. If it doesn't work for you, you need to end the relationship and move on. Next story. Am I the a-hole for locking myself and my newborn in the guest bedroom so that I could finally spend some time with her away from my wife? Hello Reddit, my daughter is two weeks old. I have barely held her since she was born. My wife constantly has her. When I do get to hold her, my wife just starts crying hysterically until I give her back. I asked her why and she said she was anxious that something would happen to our daughter and that's why she felt the need to hold her so close. No matter how much I tried to reassure her, she just wouldn't let up. I practically begged her to let me just hold her so that my wife could shower, eat and care for herself but nothing worked. I felt like I was losing Losing precious bonding time with my daughter, so I did what I thought I had to do. My wife fell asleep on the sofa with our child. I took her, went to the guest bedroom, and locked the door. My wife woke up shortly after, very upset, of course, that our daughter wasn't with her. She soon realized I was in the guest room and begged me to open the door. She was crying, kicking, and screaming. I didn't open it, though, and spent a good couple hours with our daughter there. Apparently, my wife had called her mom because I got a call from my mother-in-law cussing me out, saying how I shouldn't be taking a newborn from her postpartum mother and other things like that. My wife has been furious with me and won't speak and I'm just so frustrated because I really just want to spend quality time with my child but maybe that wasn't the way to do it. Am I the a-hole? Whoa, Jesus Christ, your wife needs help ASAP. From an actual therapist or doctor, not you. You both need to come up with coping strategies if she has postpartum depression or severe anxiety. You should not antagonize her by locking yourself in a room with your child. Please get some help and eyes on the situation immediately for everyone's safety. You're the a-hole. 
Is no one else concerned about the baby? Their mother literally won't put her down. She fell asleep with her. That's so dangerous. Original poster absolutely should have taken the baby out of her arms, at least for the sake of safety. But locking yourself in a room while your wife is in agony isn't cool. The baby probably didn't like hearing panicked screaming, banging, etc. either. No one's mental health is being looked after. I remember not wanting to leave the room that my newborn was born in, but yes, other people held her. I remember the first time my mom convinced me to take a nap while she held her daughter. I couldn't sleep because I couldn't stop crying about being so far away from my baby. She was 10 feet away in the next room. It's normal to not want to be separated, but your wife's reaction is definitely over the top and needs to be evaluated by a professional ASAP, as everyone else is saying. So you're the a-hole for not looking after your family as it spirals out of control okay so you're the a-hole only for not doing your homework did you take a birthing class did you look into postpartum depression and other issues that are common post-birth you're tormenting your wife by doing this she needs help and meds don't wait for the six-week checkup get her in now and don't separate her you're giving her anxiety and pain that is so cruel I know you want to spend time with your daughter however this is the worst way you could do this I really hope this is fake no a-holes here, but you're kind of the a-hole. Your wife is experiencing extreme postpartum mental health issues. This reaction of hers isn't healthy or normal. A bit of hesitance is normal, but crying every time you want to hold the baby is not. I understand and empathize with your rightful desire to get to bond with your new child. A better way to work on making sure you get that is therapy, not locking yourself in a room with your child while your wife has an active breakdown outside the door. If she felt nervous about you holding the child before, you did yourself a negative favor. Everyone sucks here. Your wife needs help. It's not just her baby, but yours too. No healthy parenting scenario involves one parent gatekeeping their child from the other. That being said, as I mentioned, she needs help. What you did is not that help and will clearly make the situation worse. No advice since this is not the place to be seeking advice from. Go seek out professionals as this situation is not sustainable. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting my disabled sister at my wedding? The title sounds awful, but please listen to it all the way till the end. My 22 female sister Anna, 21, is special needs. She has severe autism and while she is verbal, most of her communication is physical like sign language due to her social discomfort. She does speak around family though and has pretty bad cognitive skills. She can't comprehend boundaries and lives with our parents so they can best watch her. I'm getting married in three months. We planned a simple wedding and reception at my fiancé Michael's parents' barn and farm. Since it's all going to be DIY, and we aren't planning anything too expensive, we can do things pretty quickly since flowers, food, and decor will be provided by his family. I sent out invites last week and I asked Anna not to come. I told my parents I understood that would mean they would not show up, but it was just a heads up. Why no Anna? She has an issue with touching Michael and trying to kiss him. At times, when we were at my parents' house, Anna would try and grab Michael's hand, try and lean in to kiss him, or would have really bad shutdowns if she wasn't allowed to be directly next to him. We've tried speaking to her, but there's only so much we can do when she doesn't really understand. I told my parents I just want one day for Michael to be my partner and not Anna's comfort person. They called me selfish and asked how I expected them to agree to something like this. They told me Anna is disabled and may never experience a wedding of her own and while I have Michael for probably the rest of our lives, she'll have no one and that Michael and I can be a little more understanding to the reality of her life. I feel like a total A and what they're saying has really gotten to me and I'm starting to question my decision. Am I the a-hole? Update. My parents called me letting me know they won't be coming to the wedding and that it's best I don't bring Michael around anymore since I've chosen some man over my sister. They told me that Anna wanting to kiss Michael and hug him is normal for a woman her age and that she doesn't understand what her feelings mean. I suggested they try to redirect her during the wedding but they said Michael is going to be family to her and he needs to get over it. I suggested they watch the wedding via the web and they said that it's not fair and they deserve to see things in person. I asked if I could pay for someone with proper credentials to watch her that day while they paid attention and they asked what I would do when they died and if I'd pawn her off every time. I dropped the unfortunate truth bomb that I don't want to put any more of my life aside for Anna anymore. 
I did it up until I turned 18 and that Anna is not my life's responsibility and I won't be her keeper. I assured them I'd pay for her care, but if she's okay doing this to Michael, then I worry for if I ever do choose to have children and what she'd do to them. They said I was sick for suggesting she'd do anything to my future children and hung up on me. They sent a lengthy text telling me not to contact them until I could do the right thing. So that's where we are right now. Please read, this is not an excuse to talk badly about disabled people, nor is this an opportunity to air out your hatred for them. My sister is not a scapegoat to hate disabled people. She is a human being with feelings. She is not a statistic. She is not evil. Please stop treating my sister as if she's a malicious monster. This debacle is between me and my parents. Leave her out of it, please. I'm begging you. I don't want to hear why you think my sister sucks. Not the a-hole. I don't care if I get downvoted. You're right. She's incapable of leaving your fiancé alone on the only day she needs to leave him alone. Best wishes to you and your future husband. Edited to add, since this blew up, let me clarify. She needs to leave him alone every day and that is solely the responsibility of the parents to teach those boundaries, not original poster or fiancé. Thank you for putting this so eloquently. I couldn't have written it better myself. Original poster, you're not the a-hole in this situation, although I totally empathize with your dilemma. It can be a sticky subject to discuss disabilities, especially given the family tie, but you're not asking acting in bad faith whatsoever. Thank you to everyone in the comment section above and below me for helping create such a vibrant and positive discourse. This sub, its user, never cease to amaze me with unbashed wisdom and wit. I'd buy each and every one of you a drink if it was feasible, but since that time has not yet come, allow me to simply reiterate my earlier resounding. Thanks and add on a cheer. Congratulations, original poster, and here's to many years of joy ahead. Definitely not the a-hole. I'm autistic and I'll co-sign the heck out of this, and not just because original poster wanted her fiancé to herself, which is so valid, but also because it's likely that Anna would likely be very uncomfortable at this event anyways. Heck, I'm basically the poster child for, but you don't seem autistic, but even I get uncomfortable at events like weddings or other large parties, unless A, I have someone there that I know and I'm very comfortable with, and B, I plan my night accordingly. I usually ask to be put at the table near the doors or in the back corner so I can slip out for air if I need to without anyone noticing. Even at my sister's wedding, she knew to put me at the end of the head table where I could slip out easily and didn't ask me to give a speech. Weddings, even small ones, can be very overwhelming events for people with sensory issues or social anxiety. Forcing original poster to accommodate Anna at her wedding and forcing Anna to go to a wedding seems lose-lose for both sisters involved. Not the a-hole. Neither is poor Anna. It's your parents. They told on themselves because it sounds like they expect you to share your spouse with her to make her life more fair somehow. It really, really sounds like they've been secretly encouraging and supporting this behavior. The most charitable thing I can come up with is maybe they've deluded themselves into thinking anything to avoid a meltdown, but that way lies in madness.